Hello and good afternoon from South Cambridge here in the United Kingdom. Des is with me somewhere. I can't find him, I promise you he's still alive, but he still hasn't been updated since last year. He's truly cemented his place in history as the original piece of Starlink memorabilia. The sheep are doing what sheep do best, mincing about in the field, eating, pooping, farting and sleeping. Literally sounds like the perfect life. Today's video is all about the Starlink journey and how it went from the days of the huge excitement during beta and then the spontaneous end to it when Ellen randomly announced it on Twitter during October 2021. Most likely without anybody else knowing, including his staff. Did the rollout of premium at the beginning of 2022, right up to the more recent roaming and RV mode being enabled. It's been 15 months since I got my Starlink and I've taken some romantic pictures with my dish and hammered speed tests a little less than I used to. The experience has been good generally, with no alternative in the area at present except FTTC, which runs at 30 down, four up. This system really has been a huge benefit to me and my family. I'm still running my Asus GTX 1100s with the XC8s creating a mesh around my house. I opted in the early days not to use my Starlink router, Des, I promise you still alive, as the Asus gave me better experience, including speed, connection, stability, and I preferred the UI in it. With the version two dish, you can now opt for a designated Starlink mesh system at a cost. My understanding is that the version one round dish customers you can't add Starlink's official mesh, you need the version 2 dish and that system comes in at around £143. Of course that's on top of the initial fee which currently sits at £529 quid, plus 55 shipping and hand on fee of £89 per month for the service charge. It's a fairly sizeable figure, £816 for the first month to be exact. You probably also need an ethernet adapter, that's another £35. Quid. The RV mode seems to be working well for people in the States. That's costing about $599 along with a monthly fee of $135. So what are you getting for this outlay? Well, the version one and version two systems provide the same service in terms of performance. So that's what we're gonna move on to next. Speed tests are running in the corner as usual. There are today's results. You'll see a huge fluctuation in them. Upload and download speeds vary greatly. Ping tends to sit between 22 and 50. Still hasn't dropped below 20. Ellen said at launch this was one of the goals he had. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure when this will happen. Download speed has become less as more people get added to the growing network. Currently there are over 400,000 subscribers globally and that figure is only growing. I can only assume it's a balancing act between satellites getting launched and upgraded versus subscriber numbers and overall network demand. I am slightly disappointed that we haven't hit that 500 down. I think my initial expectations were most likely too high. Streaming has been stable enough, gaming is good, but not brilliant for a competitive play such as COD, Gears of War or Weekend Food Champs. Competing against servers under normal conditions is testing enough add in random dropouts from Starlink can certainly induce complete game rage. There are frequent firmware updates but they are less than they were during beta as the system refines and heads towards a gold standard if you like. This is the current version we're on. Weather does seem to make a difference. I have noticed it more as I've had the system longer. Originally I thought it didn't really matter, but heavy rain, thunderclouds, hail, all have a significant impact on the service. There've been a few global outages, but these are quite rare. I like the I like to imagine a new start engineer pressing their own button and bringing down everything uh, when the big outages happen. Uh, it just it's, it sometimes can last an hour, an hour and a half, but that always makes me laugh inside. System draws between 70 to 80 watts compared to the 90 to 110 during beta. Firmware updates have made it more efficient. This is somewhat helpful with the increase in electricity prices. As a dad and senior tech advisor for this house, I get fewer complaints than I used to about the service outages. 
That can only be a good thing because it means I can stare aimlessly into space and watch satellites rather than stars. I'll touch on customer service a little. I've never spoken to anyone at Starlink. I did request to have communication in the earlier days of the beta, but that was denied. When messaging them, they reply promptly, often with a generic response. Customer service can feel a little cold and non-personal. I'm also seeing more stories starting to pop up of people being sent used equipment. I fully get recycling units, but I'm not sure sending used and sometimes damaged equipment is a great idea. I can't confirm if these stories are accurate, but there seems to be a mountain number of unusual cases arising. What does the future look like? Well, Ellen's unveiled the version 2 satellite that comes in a lot heavier at 1.25 tons each and will acquire Starship to take them up rather than the Falcon. The more powerful Gen 2 satellites are almost an order of magnitude greater than the first generation units, Musk said. Near generation 2 satellites won't replace the current fleet in orbit, but complement the first generation constellation. So the service is going to improve at some point, but when? Who knows? Summarising all of this, am I happy with Starlink? Yes, I'm happy, but not pumped. If there had been a greater leap in the overall service and experience, I'd be raving about it. FTTP is coming to me soon via a company called Vineas. They're installing a 900 to 900 symmetrical system. I'm looking forward to this. There really isn't any point comparing this to Starlink. Starlink wasn't designed to compete against this sort of thing. It was designed where 4G, 5G or FTTC are not options. And that's where I was previously. I'll do some videos in the FTTP system once it's up running. So there you have it, 50 months on and I'm still going. I'll keep my Starlink on the roof even once the symmetrical system is installed because you never know when I might need it. So that's a wrap for this one. So whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, have a good one and I will catch you later. <laughs>